Peace and blessings, family. This is Voyager Shemayim, and I have a dream to share. I just feel that I can share it. But you know, sometimes you, you know you have to be very mindful with the dreams that you share. Um, but I don't feel that this dream is so personal to where it cannot be shared or somebody cannot glean from it. Anywho, Father, we thank you. We plead the blood of Yahshua. Over everyone that's listening, over myself, we come against any demonic attacks, any ricochet attacks, any rebound attacks from the enemy. We are covered. We are protected. Amen. Um, In this dream that I just had a while ago, took a little cat nap. Um, me and this person, it was a female in my dream, so I don't know if that's relevant to me or whatever, but anyway... It was me and this person, we were um, hired by my uncle. And um, so he went away on a, on a, on a, some other job to do. So he wouldn't be back for some time. But um, where we were at and what we were doing, it's like he was going to come back that day day or the next day or the next night something like that and the one of the assignments that he has given us to do and it's crazy because the dream just felt biblical to me it's kind of hard to explain it's like something and that dream what we're doing had something to do with the bible or it's in the bible or there's some kind of biblical character i don't know maybe the father will make it clear to me um a little later so anyway me and this female, we were working on a roof. And um, so it looked like we were putting, putting like some like um, tar, I guess you could say, or some kind of slime, but it was black. So I don't know if that's, you know, what they call in the Bible pitch or something. I don't know, but it was black, like a tar-like substance. It was kind of like smooth or slimy or something like that. And we were doing th that on this man's roof, on my uncle's roof. And we were spreading it with some kind of um, rake or flat brush broom type of thing. That's the best way I can describe what it was. But we was, you know, plastering and everything. And we were pretty much done. Now, this individual were her lazy, wicked self. Um, convinced me to basically now undo all of the tarring that we did on this man's roof. And I don't know what her motive was or whatever the case was, but for some strange reason, I'm giving into what she's saying. I'm listening to her. So we start, so she basically left me. No, well, no, we did it together. We did it together. We undo the roof. So just like how we was flattening the tar on, we basically took now like something and we was throwing the tar over. We were like now scooping and scraping the tar off the roof and throwing it off the roof. And so we did that. Now, so before this man comes home, I'm thinking, okay, well, we bought, we must definitely be about to get the hell out of here. Because if he come home and see that, you know, we tarred the roof and then we just untarred it now. And he done paid us and this and the third, he going to kill us. So I'm assuming that, all right, we're going to get out of town, blah, 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 blah. We're going to get the hell out of here. Nah, that's not what happens. So she decides that. Nah, I'm going to stay, stay home, and blah, blah, blah. We'll come up with something this, that, and the third. And I'm like, chick, what could you possibly say or tell this man that's not going to result in us getting killed for not doing this man's job on this man on his roof? So I'm trying to get a, a, a you know, a make it make sense to me type of response from her. Why did you have us to undo this man's roof and now you're talking about you're going to stay in the house you're not making sense what is your what is your precautions what are you going to do what plans do you have to make sure that this man somehow 
does not know that we didn't un- just undo his roof. Maybe he'll pay us more money. Maybe he'll say, why I didn't do this? And we'll say, you know, we got caught up and we'll do it again. She wasn't making it make sense to me. And I'm like, what in the world? So some of the tar had got on my um, blanket. So I was like, girl, give me, let me get one of your blankets. Because I don't want him to see the tar on the um the blanket because then he going to know that we did some crazy, some janky, janky leg stuff. Oh, I don't have no blankets. Like that. I'm like, you got blankets. So I opened up her closet and it was a blanket. In there. Matter of fact, it was a blanket in there exactly like the one I had in my hand. But it was just clean. I'm like, okay, I, can, I, need, I need to throw this away. She would not give me the blanket. And I had some tar on like my, head, my headset or something like that. So I'm sitting there like, yo. Now this man, now he comes home. Now my uncle comes home. And I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm dead now. Oh, so I'm trying to avoid him and this and the third. And it's like, it's like um the situation could have been or it could be redeemed, right? But here's the catch. I have to be honest with my uncle and tell him what happened. Right? But in being honest with my uncle and telling him the truth, in that telling the truth, I have to tell on myself, but I also had to throw the, my partner under the bus. Because remember, they were the one who initiated and suggested that we do this wicked thing. So, you know, whatever repercussions or this and that, but at least it's like the spirit was showing me that there would be redemption at the end of it. If I tell the truth and just not say nothing rather than not saying anything, I have to tell the truth and say, yo, look, I didn't want to do this in the first place. I don't know what. This person's problem was they convinced me and I went along with it. Blah, 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 blah. Please forgive me. Um, so as I was in, so I didn't, I didn't, I never got around to telling him what happened. So as I was in the room, my room, and I'm just like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? It's like in that moment, this Holy Spirit was speaking to me saying, this person is not your friend. This person is not your friend. Because if they were your friend, they wouldn't have convinced you to be unintegral. Right? So they wouldn't have convinced you to do something that was wicked and try to pull you into it. You understand what I'm saying? They wouldn't have undo this man's roof. And convince you to do it, even though this man was going to pay y'all. They wouldn't have tried to pull you into some junk, pull you into some mess. That's number one. So this person on that on that note is not your friend. And then notice how your friend left you high and dry. When it was time to even cover up the tracks in the lie. She wouldn't even, he or she wouldn't even give you a blanket in their, talking about they don't have a blanket. When they have a blanket in their closet. That they can give you to cover yourself. So they was going to make themselves look good. And essentially throw you under the bus. So this person is not your friend. Because they wouldn't cover you. So you can't cover them. And I never got to express to my uncle. Or the boss or whoever. Whatever he represents in the dream. What really happened. So that says to me that. This situation is is not finished and um, that this could either be an ongoing situation or it could be a situation that will come up very soon where we're in a friend or a partner or even a family member. Um, there's something y'all are partnering to do. And. This person is going to 
either be acting, speaking, handling themselves in a way that is not integral, that is deceptive, um, and they're going to try to pull you into it or have you to also see it their way or, or to help them in their deception or whatever ulterior motive they have, they're going to try to pull you into it. But you must not go along. Don't be afraid to lose a friend. Because it's like like the spirit revealed to me. That's not your friend. Because if they was your friend, they wouldn't be trying to do something unintegral and trying to pull you into it. Go do it yourself. You understand what I'm saying? So this person, so person is setting you up to, to, to step on top of you to get what they want. So when this situation pops up, however, which way, you will recognize it. Be integral. So don't be afraid to tell the truth. Watch this. Even if you got deceived, because we anybody can be deceived, right? And you recognize either halfway through or at the end that you were deceived. Don't be afraid to tell the truth and be honest. And say, you know, I was deceived. I apologize. I was deceived and I went along with this wicked thing. I, I really apologize. That's not my nature. I did I really did not know what I was doing, what I was getting into. I apologize. Because in doing that, there may be some consequences or they may not be. It just depends. However, you will have redeemed your integrity because you told the truth. Now, the other individual, they're going to be pissed off and angry because essentially you exposed them and you threw them under the bus. But in my opinion, that kind of throwing under the bus is justified. <laughs> because they was eventually they was going to throw you under the bus. You understand what I'm saying? So in that situation, this is where the Most High is going to give you crafty wisdom. All right. Crafty wisdom. Where someone think they're being crafty with you, but the Most High gives you a craft that is even more craftier than them. So, be integral. Um, don't be around unintegral people. Because they are on some bull crap. They are on some bullish. And if possible, they will try to pull you into it if they see that there's some... Naivety about you, they're going to try to pull you into it and or use you because it's almost like as we were scooping off the tar off the roof, it's like she disappeared, you know what I'm saying? And then I was finishing up the scooping off of the tar of that of the man's roof. So that's what's going to happen. So just be mindful. I'm sharing this dream because I definitely feel that you also will run into a situation. And I want to be blessed. I want to be integral. I want my money. I want my blessings. I want whatever it is that I signed up to do. And I want my reward for it. And I don't want to be deceived out of my reward. So even if I have to lose a friend or lose a family member or whatever, for the sake of the truth, for the sake of my truth, it is what it is. You must carry your cross with Yahshua. That's basically whatever form of punishment that has been assigned to you from the Most High, you must endure it. You must bear it. All right? It's not something that can be removed by prayer. You got to go through it. Whatever that is, man, looks different for everybody. Because even like Yahshua, who learned obedience through the things that he suffered, you say that he's your master, right? you his disciple, so you're going to go through the same thing. Ain't no different. Not only that, he says, if you don't love me more than any loved ones you have, then you're not worthy to be my disciple. You're not worthy to follow me. So do you want to be worthy to be called Yahshua's disciples? Then you got to follow him. You got to be integral. You got to go the integral route and don't allow these frenemies to trick you. 
and throw you under the bus for some stuff that they trying to do. And then when it don't go according to plan, they going to turn on you the last minute and throw you under the bus. When they want you to do some stuff with them, they have made no precautions to cover themselves and yourself, only themselves. And when you need them to cover you, they're not going to be there. They're going to pull out on you. But when you go and you go see, let me see if they really don't have what they say, say they don't have to help me get on my way. You're going to find that they have a, a closet full. This woman had a closet full of blankets and she lied to my face. Yeah. So be mindful. Don't let nobody throw you under the bus. Listen to your discernment. Listen to what your spirit is telling you. Because it will never lead you wrong. It will never. I'm telling you. When you're walking down this prophetic path, man, that discernment will never leave you wrong. Now, some of y'all discernment is out of whack. You need to tune up. But those of you who your discernment is very strong and it has always spoken, you just haven't always listened. And I'm preaching to the choir. But I'm telling you, never leave you wrong. If it tell you somebody off, something off about them, pay attention. If it tell you something is wrong about something that's uh, kind of fishy about this partnership, something fishy about this, this right here that I'm a part of, pay attention. It don't mean you act unseemly or just ghost people, but pay attention. The spirits start dealing with you about how much to give to it, to this relationship and give to this. Pay attention. There's something getting ready to be revealed. And in order for you to be protected in your integrity, so the Most High can deliver you and vindicate you, you got to be aware and ready to act. This is Voyager Shemayim, just sharing a dream with you. I pray everyone is having a blessed day, blessed evening. And a blessed night. Please like this video. Comment if you were blessed. Please definitely subscribe. Hit that bell. And follow me on all of my other platforms. You will see the information in the description. Peace and blessings. Shalom. Be safe out there now. Take care. Yeah?